Hello everyone, I'm Amor Central, and it has been a while, but we are actually back in OMSI 2, OMSI 2, um, the bus simulator. Feels really weird to say it, I've been doing a lot of recording over the summer, um, and out and about real life buses and things. It's what we're more orientating the channel towards, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But for now, we are back in OMSI 2 as promised. And with something that I have been waiting for quite a while to release, so when I looked on the Fellows Film downloads, I was very excited. This is the new Bright Bus Tours Edinburgh livery. Um, Bright Bus Tours Edinburgh, part of the um, first Scotland East oper operation. Um, sort of run a little bit in combination with Glasgow, who refurbished, repainted a lot of the vehicles. Um, first Scotland East operate the Bright Bus sightseeing tour around Edinburgh, numbered A1, in competition with Lothian, who operate City Sightseeing, the Majestic Tour, just to name a few. And are doing quite well on the success front. So I've just, I already switched on the bus to make sure it works, you can see the destination blinds on. And what we're doing is we are in Scotland, we're not in Edinburgh, as you can see. Edinburgh would be a little bit busier if it was in the game. But we are in Great Colcourt. We're at the pier front and we are doing a little island circular. We're doing the circular service that today instead of being the E1 is going to be the A1. I'm proud of the Bright Bus Tours Network. So this is something I must say about this bus is that the sounds on this vehicle are absolutely phenomenal. And this is the open top variant of the free to download Transbus ALX400 Dennis Trident. I'll link it all in the description below so you can download and recreate this one yourself. The Hoff blinds um, I've sort of done myself, made myself, so say Bright Bus Tours on. In perfect sort of sync with how they actually look in real life, I'm quite impressed with that. So have a little look inside, it's just like these buses are in real life where it's all leather seating inside, standard leather seating. Um, as they ripped out all the old maquette for this one, it was old stagecoach maquette. For other vehicles it was different maquette or blue seating, some came from golden toss, some came from stagecoach. They came from all over the place and even some came from Lothian, um, sort of second hand. Um, but they did come from Lothian then and now competing directly against them. The vehicle that we're driving as well today is ACZ7493 that in real life used to be TA276 registered X276NNO. So we're driving one of the XNNO batch and the X stagecoach London. So we'll get the bus into gear, get it sorted. We are actually due off relatively soon, so we'll get all that sorted and good. So it has been a while since I've properly driven on the bus simulator, so I may be a little bit rusty on this front. Um, I've just been so busy with other stuff this summer. <clears throat> Mainly my summer was spent travelling around. I also did quite a lot of not um, sort of YouTube related work and did other work. Some of you spotted me and um, some of you did quite well hunt me down um, in real life unintentionally, I understand, but um, you still did quite well in, in finding me um, as I was quite well hidden. So I worked uh, worked in the an element of the real life bus industry um, this summer. I um, gained a bit more knowledge for the sectors. Obviously, doing all the YouTube fronts and things. I've got the simulation side, but I'm also doing the sort of real life networking reviews, sort of academic doing studying. So it was quite nice to work in an element of the real life bus industry. Um, it was more of a, it was more the tourist sector. However, it was still very very nice to have a little look around. Um, and the open top bus does have a little bit of a theme related to it. So we're not driving this bus too fast as obviously we are doing a bus tour. So to run a tour bus company um, is very very different to sort of a, a public bus company. Um, you have a different dynamic of people. And obviously a real sort of general bus company is apart from the odd few will have generally people going from A to B. When you're doing a tour bus for example, it does sort of require, a, it, it requires a different driving skill, a different dynamic, a different level of customer service sometimes um, when sort of driving them. So for example, let's say Bright Bus Tours compared to First Scotland East's 
standard operations. Now, Scotland East, among um, standard operation within Edinburgh, operates services from places like Bathgate into Edinburgh in competition for fares. So the main goal is to get people on the bus, get people sat down and go. And it having low fares, fast, efficient buses, comfy buses, all the features that you need, sort of leather seats in free Wi-Fi, potentially USBs. Meanwhile, if you're turning towards an open top bus service, like an open top bus operator, um, the bus, instead of being the thing that gets you to your destination, within sort of the open top bus world, the bus is the destination, the bus is the aspect that you are travelling for. And sometimes people can forget that, I mean, it is easily done. There's the depot, one of the Sydney metro buses in, don't ask how or why. Um, but all I'm going to say is that when you install Manly Act 3, it decides to overwrite a few files. But it is a different dynamic. So it's like, for example, now I'm driving slowly, and it's something that if you're sat there and enthusiastic, some people will be like, oh, why, why are you driving fast as a Trident? And that's because instead of getting people from A to B, you, yes, you stay punctual, you stay on time, but because you are the destination, you are the thing that people came from, you have to provide that service that they would get at the end thing, like a restaurant or somewhere like that. So it's in, so working in sort of the open top bus world, sort of tour guided bus world, that sort of thing, sightseeing tour, can be very different dynamic to working on other buses. Something I'm doing a bit more research into, something I did some research in this summer, I mean it is a quite interesting aspect of it. Now alongside that this summer, what else did I do while I wasn't recording up to two videos? Well, I was travelling. Um, I travelled all over um, the, U the UK, quite frankly. Um, uh, yeah, quite <laughs> all over the UK. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to Scotland this summer. Um, I have wanted to visit Scotland, um, but I didn't manage to make it to Scotland this summer. It is still on the to-do list. It's somewhere I am aiming to go. Um, obviously, it, will, it won't be sort of for a little bit now, unfortunately. But it is... Oh, come on. I don't know why you're lagging. There we go. Um, I think it's because I'm trying to render a file in the background. I forgot that sort of the whole you can't really render and record a YouTube video at the same time, but hey ho, we'll manage. But I was travelling, I didn't make it to Scotland, I made it to all parts of England, new parts, and I made it to Wales as well. More videos on them coming out very, very soon. So do look out for that as I don't want to spoil them. I'm having to be very careful what I say here, as I don't wish to spoil the videos. But there's some exciting ones coming up. Um, you've already seen some of them. Um, you've already seen the Metro Centre X661. Um, that was a, it was a lovely trip up to the North East. I went up there, it was a social, good to see some people, good to see some old faces of people I haven't seen for a bit. And it was also quite nice to sample some of the vehicles and some of the brands the next day as well. Um, having sort of had a little look at the X66, that personally, compared to the streetlights, is an enormous upgrade. Um, the more capacity, the buses are comfier. And it's all about the D7R release, it's about the acceleration. I released a video recently as well from when I went to Stagecoach East Midlands, went to Grimsby, um, and was lucky enough to sample one of the DK09X First Chester B7R release. Um, the driver sort of wanted to stay on time, perfectly demonstrated the quick acceleration that's possible with those B7R release. It's possible in a safe manner, yes, sometimes it, it can be very rapid, um, but it is possible in a safe manner. It's like when I say in, in safe manner, I emphasise the incident that sort of occurred with First Bradford, where one of their sister B7 RLEs, one of the YJ 09s, ended up down a subway um, as the bus driver didn't quite realise how good the acceleration was. So it's like with this Trident, for example, reflecting off real life, it does take a while for it to pick up. But what's really good with B7R release is the pickup speed. The pickup speed that they have is phenomenally quick, um, as demonstrated in that video. If you haven't already, do go and check it out. It will be in the top right corner at some point, so you can have a look at it. Um, but it is worth a watch. As it, it perfectly demonstrates something I've been after for a while, but it perfectly demonstrates the quick acceleration and quick gear changes possible with the modern B7 hour release that not many people realise. Unless you've been lucky enough to experience it or watch like watch a video for example that one. You don't really know what, what people mean by oh goody <laughs> oh goody they've got quick acceleration. There's quite a lot of drivers don't tend to use it. 
but in circumstances where you need it, like the Metro Centre shuttle, that is quite a quick turnaround, quite a um, sort of tight timetable, as is many of the Newcastle bus services, the acceleration of the B7 hour of these does save, like as I said in the video, a couple of seconds off the mark and sort of traffic lights and bus stops, bus interchanges, that then sort of means you potentially get through an early traffic light signal, or you end up making quicker progress sort of off the mark, that then starts to save not just seconds but minutes in the timetable that will be noticeable over time. So alongside that I did travel to other areas, travel to sort of some first group regions. Again there's no spoilers, there are quite a lot of videos, real life videos coming out over the next few weeks. So please, please, please do look out for them as hopefully they will be rather exciting. Not wanting to get off the bus. Oh, I'm on. Ah, oh, I put the wrong island explorer, Brian. <laughs> I've set them both as bright bus toss circulars. I've clicked E2 mm. instead of E1. I prefer doing the clockwise circular. And um, personally, on this map, you probably realise that by now. For those of you who've been watching this channel um, since it started many, many years ago. Uh, but the reason I prefer it, sort of for obvious reasons is the fact that the coast is on your left, it's sort of, it, it's much, you, you feel closer to the coast, there's no sort of potential of buses passing, cars passing on the other side, and from sort of like, if you're at the tourist perspective, it's like when you go to Scarborough in North Yorkshire, and you sort you, you go on the route from North Bay to South Bay, or whatever it is now, on the extended, um, go ahead and extended the Scarborough district run, Named it red instead of 109. Uh, I, I don't personally, um, personally find quite confusing. I mean, the Bridlington's blue, Scarborough's red. Um, I'd have just kept in service numbers personally, but I assume that some meaning behind them somewhere. And they've extended the red up to the Sea Life Centre. They've replaced the Scarborough skipper that used to use one of the old T Reg um, X Lovian Trident's T509 that every time I went to Scarborough over a three or four year period I always went on without without fail every time I went to Scarborough I was on that bus and that's now operating down first in Cornwall is that it's on one of the not Atlantic coasts but it is on another coast to run um, and it joins a lot of the other toppers that they have around there do excuse the textures going weird Great Cocoa is an old old map um, as I say it is an old one it's the reason why, unfortunately, I can't provide a download for this map specifically. Um, because, unfortunately, it, it no longer exists. It was such a shame when it got taken down. I think it got taken down when they had a few page issues. Yeah, it got taken down when they had a few issues, sort of, when we transferred over pages and things. It was on one of the old forums then disappeared, etc, etc. So, it, it, unfortunately, it's no longer on the forum, so I, I'm, not a, I'm not able to provide a link that I do apologise about. However, I do hope these videos that I do um, allow everyone to sample, um, or to, to like explore the map a little bit, and give you inspiration for other maps, as when I made the Balamir Island map, that some of you will remember, some of you will think, my goodness, Central, that's a throwback. But when I made Balamir Island, Balamir Island, that was because the left path variant all hadn't been released and I couldn't get the right path to work. So I quite frankly just made me own. I do like this bit of the map. Anyway, as I was saying, I like driving sort of with the course to the left because obviously it's close. It's like with Scarborough, you always get the bus from North Bay to South Bay because you're closer to the coast. There's no buses passing the other way that block your view. There's no too strong smell of diesel. I mean, there's a few certain vehicles there um, that are, are cracking on age wise. So, imagine you may get a sense of diesel off them. But apart from that, it is quite nice. I mean, the the one the vehicle that I have in mind when I say that is V160 MEV. Um, I remember going. It wasn't it wasn't this year, unfortunately. I didn't make it up this year. But last year, when I visited the Triple Five Filer Service, that open topper 
was making a few appearances on there every so often. They had an Olympian on in the morning. Yes, you hear me correctly, a Volvo Olympian. Um, I do have a video of that actually coming out soon. And for some reason it hasn't been released yet, but it is on the yeah, to release like list. Sorry, yeah. I've got a load of German tourists on. <laughs> that's, that's my excuse, a lot of German tourists. But V160 MEV, um, I remember being stood opposite it at the railway station and as it set off, it disappeared. The back end of that bus physically disappeared within black smoke. I've never seen anything like it. Um, it was it was pretty amazing, pretty spectacular. Um, but here's a lovely bus. I love the old Trident. It's like this, this XNNO that we're sort of replicating in this video. I love older Tridents, I really, really do. They're very nice buses. I mean, it's lovely that a lot of them have sort of seen further use from London or from Independence as open-top buses. It is a nice way for them to survive. But as always with sort of certain vehicle types, they are pretty poor to maintain. So it's a mixed bag. Um, I know that some people that I know will turn around and say, yeah, Tridents are lovely from even a maintenance perspective, but there's also quite a big opposition against them. A lot of people prefer B7TLs over them, and some people prefer Scania's. But I do like my Tridents, I love my Tridents, love my B7s, love my Scania's. So I'm pretty, pretty easy going on that front. So again, I do apologise about the textures here. I mean, the sun, the sun fading really does give to such an effect. Uh, when you drive with these sort of textures, it does feel like I'm going back to 2016 in this game. It really does. I feel I should be talking about Newcastle map, the latest room I'm thinking of driving on it. I remember doing Newcastle map. Um, Newcastle map was, was really, really fun to drive. I mean, it, it in no way, shape or form represented Newcastle in real life. I mean, the only part of it, I think, was the time um, that was placed realistically. Um, and apart from that, it was it was very because obviously at that time when they were building those original maps, they didn't have the objects, the um, blender skill set, or even the buses to go with with a map like to that degree. So that Newcastle map was amazing at the time. But personally, if it would be if if it was me, I'd have made it a fictional map, and it'd still be epic to this day. I mean, it still is, to be fair. I am just going to have to get a little screenshot here. Now, I wasn't aware that it was going to... Let's just... There's people stood upstairs. I probably shouldn't be doing this for long. You can just see it hanging off. I mean, this would have been lovely if I couldn't have had the bus hanging off. That looks nice. I like this. It's just such a pleasant livery. The Bright Bus Tours livery is just so pleasant um, to sort of look at. It's an operator, it's like a, a, sort of a, a sightseeing company, a sightseeing tour. I really do want to travel on um, just to sort of see how it is. Because obviously, with all of these older vehicles running it, and it is, it is sort of very old vehicles compared to Lovin who use these state-of-the-art buses. It just goes to show that success can occur even when you don't have the newest of the new buses. Something I've argued before in the past with open-top bus tours is potentially certain, sometimes in cases, the older buses are nicer to go. And it's like with anything, it's like the trains, for example. The older trains, the older buses are nice to go on because the seats are comfier. It's like with Lovian, for example, they have their sort of Gemini 3s on it that have these new sightseeing spec seats. And this is everyone getting off. <laughs> there it is. Um, they have these new sightseeing spec seats that are sort of basically plastic with a little bit of cushion in the middle, like a little bit. Meanwhile, these, for example, that are standard on quite a lot of buses, they have standard padded foam seats. They're a, a lot comfier, especially when you're sat on a tour bus for 
like an hour, sometimes even longer. It's like this one, for example, 75 minutes if you do it all the way around. And that doesn't sort of... That doesn't consider the fact as well that you might be stay, you might do a full tour, then stay in and do another half tour to get to your destination. Then you jump back on, you hop back on, hop back off. And over time, it's like comfier seats will win, especially when the prices are the same. It's also very cheap. Ten pound a head for this tour. It's pretty amazing. I've only got one person sat downstairs, so we'll whiz it back. That the Dennis Trident engine roar, I think. It has been absolutely ages since I've been on a Dennis Trident. Um, I think I need to add it to my to-do list um, quite urgently. Because I've been on a lot to Spectre recently. Um, went to have one um, with Airbus um, in Bristol. That'll give you a hint to where some videos are coming from um, in the very near future. Not with Airbus themselves, but from that region. That is all I shall say. So I've been on a, a on test Spectre recently, after the 250 um, I go on B7s all the time, we were, I was on one earlier today, a B7 TL, um, but I haven't done it a Trident for a while, so it is something I am going to have to do. I know that Stagecoach East Midlands um, based Workshop Depot um, have one of the MX-53s at the moment, or did. Um, they have 1803, one I believe. I don't know if it's transferred out. Um, I know Lincoln still have a few. Um, I know they still have a few. I don't know about Games, but Games was an interesting one at the moment. With the, I'm on about the President Ram, the Alexis here. I just the try. I, I had a really good first experience with one of the um, MX53 plaques and Presidents. Instantly fell in love with the match. Um, I think the one I went on was one of the better ones, but it's still. Uh, made, me, made me fall in love with the batch of vehicles. So I know that Gainsborough used to have quite a lot, but it appears like on bus time, sort of having a look recently from photos and things, they've actually replaced a lot of them with Wyano 6s. I know they've still got one or two left, but they've certainly got rid of a couple there recently, and a few of the 180s that have tra transferred elsewhere. So I think the O 6s that they've got are from Hull. Um, they've been painted into the new livery already and believe the front hole. Hello, you're right. <laughs> that was a very up close and personal. Um, I think, come on, I want me. There we go. Can't believe I had to stop the bus just to get this view that I wanted. There we go. Won't be worth it all after that. map I do need to drive again I think is smart and do actually send in your suggestions for maps and things um, and what have and buses and repaints as, as I'm slowly sort of getting back into the Omsi world um, and I'm going to need a few pointers here and there I do understand the big elephant in the room is that there's a streetlight version 1.2 update that's come out that's a London variant now everyone has driven that, um, I know that recently everyone's had a, had a go at it, you, you probably all had a drive of it yourselves that were watching, so I thought I'd sort of hang on a little bit, hang fire on that until we get some repaints and what have, some interesting repaints and things out for it, and then take a spin in it. Um, as I, I understand the, probably the, the entirety of YouTube Omsi 2 style, oh, so that has gone weird. Um, the whole sort of Omzi 2 YouTube has just gone street like mad at the moment. And personally, if I'm given the choice between a Dennis Trident and a street light, I don't know about anybody else, but I got Dennis Trident. Um, so that's what I've done in this video. It's like we're driving on snow a little bit here. Snow in September. I mean, it is, it is the UK, anything is possible nowadays. I 
wasn't expecting to have anybody waiting, but it's a nice pleasant Hello. surprise. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it seems a great coal quart in the Scottish Isles is very popular with the German population for their holidays. You know, like we have Ibiza and all of that lot, um, York and places like that that the, the UK population tend to go. It appears that according to OMSI 2, um, the Scottish Isles are very, very popular with the German people. That was the first time in this video we've got to sort of a decent gear from <laughs> driving this. It's been a relatively slow one, but that's what you get with the tall bus. There's just one person sat at the very back upstairs. Reminds me of when I had my favourite T509, I believe it was SSG, I think. Like that last bit of the reg, I think, is wrong. Um, one of the Exlovians. Um, that Scarborough District ran for a bit on their Scarborough skip. They also had T510 for the whole tour. T509, oh, that was a bit wide. Um, T509, um, I remember jumping on, it, jumping on it at the railway station. Had the entire bus to myself. It was, such, it was a lovely motor because the route itself allowed you to properly hear the original Dennis Trident engine. And then it had so, the seats and it was so comfy. It was just a truly phenomenal bus. It was such a shame they got rid of it, but I understand the change in direction, go ahead, taking over with the B7s and things was a change in direction. But it, 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 was, so, it was such a lovely bus. Um, I think it is one I am genuinely, I'm, I'm quite willing to go down to Cornwall um, to sample again, because it, it was such a nice vehicle. I remember going on that um, oh, a couple of years ago now, having the entire sort of open top upper deck to myself. Oh, somebody wanted to get off. There we go. Well, th those were the days with them. <laughs> um, it's something I'm looking forward to again. I'm going on a trident. I'm going on an open top one if I can as well. So what's in store for the future? I've waited until the very end of this video to discuss the thing I had mentioned at the beginning. So we've got the exciting Ammo Central Lives coming back. Um, the date I've put down at the moment um, is the 25th. I'm wanting to bring it back, however that might be changing. It might be slightly early, it might be slightly later. But it will be around that time, so do look out for an announcement there at the time. ABC Live episode 4 will be back. I'm also slowly peppering in OMSI 2. As you'll notice, this is the first video in a while. They, they, there won't be an OMSI 2 video for a little bit after this as well. Um, a, because I've got a lot of real life bus videos to show you all. And B, because there's not... There's not really... Oh, I've mounted the curve. I didn't want to do that. I thought somebody was getting off the bus. Um, I've forgotten my train of thought now. <laughs> um, there's not that much being released from the 2. I don't want to, as I say, exhaust the resources that are already there. As obviously, don't want to see the same thing over and over again. Um, no one wants to do that, really. So I'm, I'm working with what we've got at the moment. Um, as I say, this is an absolutely stunning repaint. I will link in the description so you guys can drive it as well yourselves. There we go, that'll do. Oh, look at that. It's superb repaint. Really, really is. But as I was saying, OMSI 2 is going to be peppered in a little bit over the next few weeks and things. Um, do notice as well that it is going to be more sort of real life bus videos. Um, two reasons. One, because as I've already said, I've recorded a lot of them to release. And two, because that is where I do wish to take the channel in the future. That is where the channel he that's where the channel is heading. A lot of you loved it this summer, 
all the videos I did and hopefully into the autumn you'll keep enjoying the videos I'm making. Keep sending in your suggestions for the real life boss video stuff as well, as well as the OMSI 2 stuff. Because OMSI 2 content isn't going anywhere, do not worry. It isn't going anywhere, I just wanted to see if that button worked on the outside and it does, that's cool. OMSI 2 is staying, sort of the Roblox simulation will be staying. And there will be more of those videos as we go into the autumn. But do be aware that I am really pushing the real life bus video stuff. Because I'm really enjoying recording it. And you're all enjoying watching it. So we'll be having a mix. But obviously real life's a bit more orientated. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. As I do keep saying and I cannot stress enough. Please do keep sending in your suggestions. If you have enjoyed this video do hit that like button. And be sure to subscribe for more. Once again, and we're once and final, thank you again for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative, interesting, and I hope you found the, the repaint as nice as I have. So I will see you all in the next video I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.